So growing up, I read the article I mentioned to you called, uh, what was it? Behind the mic, I think. Oh yeah. 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 And, um, I, so full transparency again to the audience, like we met, you asked me to be on your podcast. So I was on your podcast almost a year ago now. It has to be pretty oh, close yeah. to that. And then we've, you know, we've DM'd, we've caught and kept in touch. And then when I was in Boston, we grabbed dinner and a couple beers and, you know, we've been, uh, kind of getting to know each other a little bit more, but I didn't know your story growing up. And so when I read this article, as I was prepping for the show, um, I don't even know where to begin, but you, the part that got me that I think is so crazy is you were actually at the point when you were going to college where you had to take, steal, borrow, close or high school or high school well, from the I lost and found school. I went to yeah. a boarding school for high school. So yeah. Yeah. But you had, um, um, you know, uh, challenges growing up with your mom and yeah. I would love if you are comfortable, if you would share what it was like for you growing up and how you navigated that as a young person, young man. <laughs> well, Nick, I would rather not. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, well, no, that's funny. The article um, that you read about me, it was written by Brewster Academy for their school website. And uh, Brewster Academy is where I went to high school. It's actually a boarding school in Wolfboro, New Hampshire. Um, and I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, but I went away to boarding school for high school. Um, and I did have a, a pretty fucked up childhood. And so, and that's part of why I went to boarding school. Um, and, and to be honest, also, I think some of the things that happened during my childhood are what contributed to me having some anger issues that yeah. I had to get help for as an adult. Um, <clears throat> because, because, um, you know, uh, the reason I went to boarding school, so my mother years ago had brain cancer and um, they they had to radiate her brain to kill the cancer and keep her alive. And the radiation badly damaged her brain. And uh, so she became very mentally ill. And, um, you know, I was an only child and I was being raised by a very mentally ill adults. And my father you know he's a good guy and we've become really good friends during my adult years but he was kind of a workaholic dad he was very focused mm -hmm. on his um his career um what did he do he was a college professor he taught economics okay. um he was very focused on that and and so he wasn't a super involved dad which is not ideal in any situation but i think it's worse you know if if you have a workaholic dad who's not involved and you have a stable mother or siblings you can lean on, it's not as hard. But, you know, I was also an only child and the person raising me was very mentally ill and not really capable of taking care of herself, much less a child. Um, right. And so she was very abusive with me throughout my childhood. Uh, you know, I have some physical scars. Uh, I got this bad boy on my wrist from where I got stitched up in a hospital after an incident with her. Um, and so it was basically, it was basically recommended that I went to boarding school, but, um, you know, with my, with my mother, you know, the, the family therapist recommended that I go to boarding school, didn't know everything that was going on. He, he only knew a fraction of how bad it was. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like my mother could have ended up in jail for some of the things that she did to me. Jeez. Um, and, it, it, you and know, how old it, were you when she was diagnosed with brain cancer and went well, through that so treatment? She had, she had multiple, um, multiple stints with cancer. So the first time she ever had brain cancer was years before I was born, but then she had like, you know, sometimes people who recover from cancer don't stay cancer free. Yeah. So she had multiple times throughout my childhood when, uh, she had to get more brain radiation and, and just over the years, it got worse and worse and worse. Um, and she got more and more and more mentally ill. And, uh, I mean, and she would do things, you know, she would wake me up in the middle of the night for no reason, just to sleep deprive me, or she would wake me up at 6am on a Sunday when I didn't have school by dumping water on me and order me to oh clean the gosh. house. And she had one incident when she kicked me in the genitals, uh, because I wasn't gosh. listening um, and, uh, like, yeah, so it was just, it, and all these things happen and 
it, it was just a really tricky situation because my my dad when you're so young <laughs> yeah and I, I mean, my dad didn't want my mother to end up in jail and he had compassion for her because she had mental health issues uh, and he but so basically his decision was for me to just after talking to the family therapist was for me to just go to boarding school um but now did you have but, a family therapist that was like you guys selected as a family or was this like a social services it issue? wasn't mandated i mean and okay. if if more things hadn't been swept under the rug it probably would have been mandated yeah I mean, that's why I, I was asking probably would have been taken from <laughs> from my mother um and, and the thing is my dad you know some kids in my situation you know end up in foster care or homeless mm -hmm. you know while my situation at home was horrible you know, my dad made decent money as a college professor, so he could afford to send me to boarding school because it's right. not cheap. No, um, it's not. And so, and, and that's the thing that I think people don't realize is you can be, you know, from a somewhat financially stable background and still have a horrible childhood. Absolutely. Um, you know, people make assumptions about, oh, your dad has an impressive job and your childhood must have been easy. That's not the case. No. And there are a lot of kids at, at boarding school who had – really fucked up home lives, but also really successful parents because it was a combination of their home wasn't a good enough environment for them to be there, but their family also had the money to send them to boarding school, which a lot of families don't. Um, but, but, but yeah, but then I, I was, I was dropped off at Brewster Academy and uh, my mother insisted on driving me and she, for whatever reason, uh, took all of my suitcases that I'd been bringing to boarding school and that I was going to take to boarding school and hid them and then told me that she'd put them in the trunk of the car and drove me to New Hampshire and dropped me off with one set of oh clothes that I was wearing and no phone. Um, and so you're at a new school. You're the new kid at a school in New Hampshire um, and you have one set of clothes <laughs> And so I, they talk about when Brewster Academy wrote an article about me, they, they initially wanted to write an article about my career and what I've been accomplishing. Cause obviously anytime an alum of your school has success, it was a good look for the school. But mm -hmm. I told them I wanted to talk about that, but I also wanted to talk about like what I was going through when I went there and how it helped me to get through it. And so they talk about in the article that you read, um, how I was dropped off there with no clothes and started stealing clothes out of the lost and found. Um, and, you know, going to classes in pants that didn't fit. And, um, and, you know, and it's, it's an uncomfortable way to be a new kid at a new high school. And, and there were some people at Brewster, you know, teachers and other students who really helped me and took me under their wing. There were also, you know, some people there who didn't understand my situation and made jokes about my clothes or this or the, you know, you don't have clothes. You don't have a phone. You're a fucking mess. And in, in their defense, they didn't know what I was going through. Yeah. But that was what I learned about when it comes to judging people. You have no idea what they're going through behind the no scenes. Clue. And when you go through shit like that and people judge you, it, it puts a lot of things in perspective for you. Um, so, you know, if I'm walking down the street and I see a, you know, homeless man, I'm not going to say, Hey, go get a job. You fucking bum. Like some people say stuff yeah, like that. Like, you never know what anyone is going through. Um, and, and you don't I know their going story. Stuff like that makes you more compassionate. But yeah, the article you read was a mixture of talking about my career, but also what I was going through, why I went to Brewster and how Brewster helped me get through it. And that was, yeah, that was written by a freelance writer who worked for Brewster for their alumni magazine. 